No, 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 this makes a lot of sense. A riderless mo motorcycle smashes through the front window of the banner, and who do you think of first when you're rounding up your usual suspects? Me. Yeah, and the fact that the bike was stolen, don't forget. That also made that light, that Marty Sabre light, go off in my head. Listen, Marty, we have an eyewitness. Who? General Manager of the Banner, Bo Buchanan. Mr. Marty, he picked you out in a lineup. This is going to be an open and shut case. So why don't you just save us all a lot of trouble and just confess, huh? Okay, I stole this motorcycle and I smashed it through the front window of the banner. And I'm also responsible for Hurricane Andrew and the recession. Can, can I tell you how much better I feel now that that's off my chest? Huh? Marty, Marty, Marty. You know, it's a good thing you've got a sense of humor. I mean, you keep that sense of humor because it's going to make you a very popular girl on cell block 17. Has he got out the rubber hoses yet? Hello, Nora. No, I think we're still working on veiled threats. Are you, Marty? Yeah. Don't say another word to the stormtrooper. Well, who are you? And why are you here? I am defending you. Oh, that's funny. I thought I'd retain John Russell. Well, I'm his partner now, and he's handed over your case to me. Is there a problem? Oh, don't tell me you're one of those women who doesn't trust women. Is there a problem? Could you help me with a little reality check here? This lawyer who says she's defending me and this district attorney who wants to throw the book at my head, mm -hmm. they're friends? Well, not exactly. They used to be married. I'm doomed. You know you're wasting your time. No kidding, why is that? Well, we've got an eyewitness. They saw Marty running from the scene of the crime. Oh, so it's the eyewitness's word against uh, Miss Daybrook. <laughs> Happens to be a solid citizen. He doesn't happen to work for the banner, does he? General manager. Oh. And Marty here has a rap sheet a mile long, and it's getting longer. Anything serious? Mostly petty stuff. So in other words, it's a fat cat who is going after a delinquent kid. What, for the thrill of the chase? And where is that old presumption of innocence? Oh, my goodness, there it goes, flapping its wings, flying away. Nora, Nora, just save your grandstanding for the jury, because I am not impressed, okay? But I am curious about something. I mean, why would a... A hotshot lawyer like yourself take on a nickel and dime case like this. Now, don't tell me that you've, you've lost your magic touch for the center ring. I haven't much lost my touch at all, Hank. You shall find out when we go duking it out in court. Oh, baby, I can see that you are looking forward to it. I am to looking it. forward to going against you into the breach again. Yes, I am. And I can't believe they found a ring big enough for us to go 15 rounds. Would I be out of line here if I said I'm not sure if I want to be in Madison Square Garden for the two of you? Like, maybe I should look for a different lawyer. You can look all you want to, honey, but you're not going to find a better legal legal. Or one with a stronger motivation, because I am looking forward to cleaning this fellow's clock. <laughs> and I am shaking in my briefs. The same way you used to shake in your sleep, he used to have the most god-awful nightmares. Doesn't seem to anymore. Well, that's when he was around long enough to cozy up to. I had a job, Nora. And what do you call what I had? A hobby? Something that you let me do long enough, as long as it gave me enough time to go home and clean the house, take care of the kid, walk the dog, and make a spectacular jello mold? Your jello mold was a disaster. A I know it, you know it, the dog the even dog. knew it. Okay, okay, oh okay, you okay. two. Enough, 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 enough. Now, will the gingham dog and the calico cat please go to your separate corners? <clears throat> now, Hank, you were taking me out to dinner, remember? And I usually do not like to butt in, but I am starving. And also, I have to get back to the hospital, okay? Uh, you'll excuse us. We can talk about this later. Fine. Oh, can I use your office to confer with my client? Sure, be my guest. Well, you two are at each other's throats pretty fast. Professional courtesy. Why don't we get down to business? First things first. Did you do what you're accused of doing? What? Run a motorcycle through a plate glass window? Not. Okay. So, 
Do you know this person who says he saw you doing this hot dog stunt? He's a guy named Bo Buchanan. Bo. Yeah, one of the local gentry. Bo Buchanan. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to have a little chat with this solid citizen. Tomorrow on Home, the hottest antique show of the year. You'll get a sneak preview, plus the truth about ghosts from real-life Ghostbusters. Don't miss Gary Collins and Sarah Purcell. There's no place like home. Coming up, Ned tries to forgive Jenny's lies. Stay tuned for General Hospital, following an ABC News brief. So how's, how's Nora? Oh, so is that another name I'm not supposed to bring up? Let's just say that my mother and I enjoy a not-so-perfect relationship. Actually, enjoy is not the word I'd use. So you're not very happy that she's here, then? No, I'm not. Neither's my father. She's causing trouble for him and Sheila. Your mom seemed pretty cool to me. That's because she likes you. If she didn't, she'd do anything to keep us from being friends. I can't believe that. Well, you don't know Nora Gannon. Once she decides to do something, she does it. And right now, she's decided to run my life. Uh, doctor, um, I'm going to take this magazine card around, but is there any extra work you'd like me to do? Yeah, hang on to that attitude for the next 35 years or so. And then check with the head nurse about the uh, more short-term stuff. I'll see you later. Okay. Volunteerism suits you. Oh, hi, listen, thank you for meeting me here. I uh, just couldn't stand the thought of missing my day with the patients just to sit in some legal office. Well, you sound very dedicated. It's a plus to any judge. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Really? Yes, but we're going to have to do more to prepare for your court appearance than just iron your uniform. Well, I shouldn't even have to appear. I didn't do anything. Come on, running a motorcycle through the banner office windows? I'm a, I'm a candy stripe for not evil Knievel. On the other hand, you're no stranger to risk-taking. 1989, criminal mischief. 1990, defacing public property. 1991, drunk and disorderly. And I understand this year, in addition to shoplifting, you started a rather nasty false rumor about a local minister's sexual preference. Well, you forgot the time when I stole Marianne Kressler's chocolate chip cookies in the first grade. Marty, a good lawyer always checks a client's background. And I am a good lawyer. One who's going to represent you, even if your past isn't exactly candy stripes. Now... In order for me to defend you properly, I have to know if the charges against you are true. Marty, are you the one that sent that motorcycle through the Man, this window? town just can't wait to see me take another header. Ooh, there's Marty, the criminal. If something's gone wrong, it must have been her. Did you do this? No, I didn't. I've done a lot of stupid things, I'll admit, but smashing a banner window is not one of them. Okay, well then, that's how we'll plead. Innocent. But I want you to understand something, Marty. If you're lying, this whole thing is going to blow up in your face. And when it does, it's going to leave deeper scars than going through any window ever could. Marty. Is that you? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I got busted again. <laughs> Are you serious? For what now, Marty? Get this. Crashing a motorcycle through the this humongous window at the banner offices. <laughs> Is that insane or what? What? I didn't do it, all right? I didn't do it, so quit looking at me like that. Marty, convince me that I shouldn't be looking at you like this. I can't. But, Billy, you can't tell anybody I jumped off that bike. You're gonna promise me. I've got this super intense lawyer who said that she'll get me off no matter what, but if... I know if she finds out that I really did it, she'll blow me off like everybody else in this town has. No, I know. I know. That's why I told you. But I can't take any chances with this lady, Nora Gannon. Rachel's mom. I need her.
Marty, why don't you just tell her the truth? No way. Interesting case? Hi. Yes, very interesting. A young woman, a motorcycle, and an angry newspaper. But I am much more interested in this young woman. Sit down, sit down, sit down. How are you, sweetheart? I, you have made me so happy by asking me to have lunch with you today. Well, I wanted to see you. You wanted to see me? My God, will you write that down for posterity and sign it? <laughs> Look, I felt bad about the last time we were together. I, I really blew up on oh, you. I mean, the smoke is long since clear. Okay. So, how is everything in your great wide world? <laughs> I have a great wide M Civ term paper oh, due mm, next week. Good old M Civ. <laughs> <laughs> is this the class that Kevin Buchanan is taking with you? No, we're in economics together. Oh, well, he must be pretty good given his family background. You know, I don't know. He doesn't talk much in class. I mean, he just sits there listening with this look on his face. It's actually kind of neat. In what way? Well, he looks so open. You know, kind of like a kid just taking everything in. You sound very fond of him. And I passed fond a while ago. Something's wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing's wrong. Okay, there is. He's divorced. And he has a son. So? A divorce shouldn't prevent a man from starting a new life. Yeah, but what if the old life isn't over? I think he might still be in love with his ex-wife. 